good morning to all of you greetings from new delhi india i am grateful to the organizers for inviting me to this uh, great uh, conference uh, which i have been following for many years and now uh, and uh, the mutual recognition as a subject is very pertinent in the current context when uh, a lot of uh, Uh, digitalization efforts are uh, happening within a jurisdiction uh, but uh, cross border uh, processes are not so prevalent because of many factors and one of the major factors happens to be uh, mutual recognition environment which are not at the present conducive so in order to address this i have prepared a 10 to 12 minutes presentation with talks in terms of why mutual recognition is necessary uh, and why why it is important uh, what are electronic data and its added nature uh, scope of mutual recognition uh, which is which can be beyond trade related data so i am basically focusing on cross border paperless trade but uh, definitely this particular uh, discussion is beyond that uh there are some certain research findings which i would like to share with you and also would like to share with you indian experience on this particular subject uh so the first uh, uh point on why mutual recognition is important uh let us recognize that in a uh, electronic data interchange uh, environment which is uh, Uh, cross country cross border uh, trust is a major factor and uh, uh, as on date we find that there are a legal framework existing within a jurisdiction to recognize an uh, electronic uh, document uh, electronic data but uh, uh, cross border mutual understanding among recognizing uh, each other's electronic data is uh, 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 reality which is not there uh, and this is also confirmed by a un study which happened in the year 2019 so cross border data exchange uh, environment uh, we need to address substantial equivalent level of reliability among member states to understand that uh, we recognize each other understand each other uh then the electronic data exchange is storage and retention uh, gets regulated by a local uh, regulation but when it is cross border uh, then we need to understand that we need to uh, ensure that we, we address that also recognize that in multi jurisdictional environment and this process becomes very difficult and difficult when uh we are operating in a new environment like cloud computing where data is residing in multiple jurisdictions and uh, uh and processes are happening in uh, multiple jurisdictions so these are the issues uh and uh, if you see the emerging technologies of blockchain internet of things this is also multiplying to our concerns and uh a different dimension so there is a need for us to really address this as a subject i am also trying to bring before you to expose you to an uh buy pay a buy ship and pay model of uh, united nations center and of trade facilitation and electronic business where we are trying to uh, uh, expose you to uh the cross border paperless trade environment which are multi jurisdictional so things happen in multiple jurisdiction and we need to have a technological and legal framework to address that uh, as we go along we have to say that what is electronic data in its in a nature so if you see uh that electronic data interchange has matured as a is standard over a period of time but reliable exchange is an issue and uh, mm, uh, we have to also recognize in a, a multi jurisdictional environment the data could be structured or unstructured 
uh, uh, and we have to address the interoperability and compatibility issues. Uh, we have to also address the different data standards like SML, XML, PDF, etc. And also take into consideration different technologies for addressing this. Uh, while doing this, we have to also recognize that integrity of data is to be addressed in multi-jurisdictional environment, meaning thereby if this is addressed in your uh, jurisdiction, the same equivalent level of addressing should be done with your trading partner nation. Uh, and uh, this particular issue gets multiplied when volume of data is high in an environment of today's big data uh, use cases uh, such as Internet of Things. So, uh, so we have to also take into consideration legacy systems and need for migration of the data uh, from there. Uh, and of course, uh, when the languages are different, so those uh, issues also get uh, multiplied. And uh, so these are, uh, uh, this poses significant challenges in enabling digital trust. So a scope of mutual recognition should be what? Uh, that we have to ensure that we have subsequent, sub substantial equivalent level of reliability among um, uh, data sharing among member states. So this is one thing which is very necessary. And we may have to go beyond just trade related data. We'll have to talk in terms of technological standards uh, used in data exchange. So we have to say data integrity is an issue which need to be addressed in all the all kind of applications. Uh, there are, need to be uh, other uh, institutional framework we should address this. And of course, uh, uh, we have to establish a level of confidence in addressing identification, authentication uh, in a trusted environment. So not only with that you are talking in one jurisdiction and multiple jurisdiction. A role of uh, uh, trusted uh, uh, third party or trusted environment that need to be addressed. So uh, we, I am trying to share with you a, a finding of a preliminary research on this subject uh, that shows that there are a number of bilateral and multilateral institutional and intergovernmental arrangements which exist for cross-border mutual recognition, which I will come a little later in this slide itself. Bus. But the close analysis uh, helps us make the following general observations. Number one, uh, that uh, an initiative of uh, concept of trusted transboundary legally significant electronic interactions is, is still fairly new, although this uh, was uh, launched by uh, the Russian Federation and uh, this is, uh, we are trying to take it forward. Uh, while most countries have put in place national legislation uh, and there are uh, domestic and regional and uh, limited to highly integrated unions of state initiatives but uh, fairly cross-border in multi-jurisdictional environment is not a reality. One, um, one of the main factor perhaps maybe awareness level are generally low. Uh, but there are initiatives which perhaps we might need to recognize in this area is an initiative like <clears throat> uh, an association of South Asian nations have um, a uh, ASEAN initiative on this subject which is part of their uh, single window environment in this uh, ASEAN nation. The other initiative which really fascinates me a lot when I have had the chance to visit earlier Russian Federation and interact with uh, the officials of Eurasian Economic Union that this initiative of uh, uh, EU is also very encouraging but of course it has to really go beyond that. Uh, the initiative of European Union uh, uh, and the initiative of uh, uh, United Nations Economic and Social Commission for 
uh, Asia and the Pacific Initiative on uh, Framework Agreement on Cross-Border Paperless Trade is uh, trying to address this as part of uh, the Asia-Pacific uh, Initiative of uh, Mutual Recognition. And of course, uh, similar more initiative of uh, UNC FACT uh, in terms of uh, uh, not only mutual recognition but also creating trust in the environment. Uh, there are recommendations and standards for doing that. <clears throat> uh, I am sharing with you Indian experience which basically talks in terms of uh, um, what we did in the last uh, two decades. Uh, we did uh, uh, initiate a uh, IT Act in the year 2000 which is based on Ancitral model law. Uh, basically the purpose of uh, doing a model law based on international standard is that if uh, other countries are also basing uh, their legis legislations on these standards then its uh, interoperability flows from there. So this particular uh, act gives legal recognition to electronic record uh, and uh, uh, talks in terms of electronic authentication, gives licenses to certifying authority. Uh, does changes to Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act that uh, electronic evidence is accepted and Bankers Book Evidence Act which really provides uh, a framework for electronic payment and Reserve Bank of India Act which is the lead bank to facilitate this in the country. But when we did in 2000, we do recognize that uh, we were hooked to a particular technology and we, did, uh, we thought that there is a need for us to be technologically neutral. So we did an amendment in 2008. We did amendments to many more uh, areas, but which is more relevant in the present discussion is uh, we pre made provisions for electronic signature, which is able, which uh, provides a framework for recognizing all kind of signatures, which the controller of certifying authorities who is a regulator in the country is satisfied that it gives a fairly equivalent level of reliability. If you have any queries, my email address is indicated here. Thank you very much for your attention.